Nick, Nick here, Animal Engineering. Welcome back to the channel. On this episode, we are going to get the rear shock mounts fabricated. Uh, and then, by the end of this episode, in theory, we should be able to put all the rear suspension onto the chassis. Now, I don't know if I have enough clearance to actually put the wheels on, but we'll see. We should be able to get everything else on though, so it's pretty pretty good so what I've got to do so this is the original shock um, I believe it's already got like lowered springs in it um, but basically what I've got here so that's already sort of templated in the jig and these are the air shocks I'm running so I'm gonna start off with some uh, eighth inch plate and I'm going to cut out and modify that top template to match the shape of this because I want to have full surface coverage for this to bolt to and it's starting to rain you <laughs> might not be able to hear me so yeah, I'll do that first and then I'm going to try and jump over to Fusion and um, get my head around it Well, quick little play around there. I've got a few pieces, just roughly cut. Um, yeah, you see the angles aren't very nice, but curves in that aren't super straight. But I was going to take a photo of them, and I'll jump into Fusion, I'll scan them, I'll do some nicer arcs. Uh, you see down there, I've drawn a couple of little relief cuts. So I'm going to do it out of 8th inch plate again. I've got a, like old rusty sheet that I won't really use for anything. So it's kind of scrap steel. And I just want to get it tacked up out of that. And then get the upper control arm, make sure that's not going to crash into it. And just get a bit of an aesthetic idea of what it's going to look like before I chop it out of some quarter inch steel for good. So in a second, these will be steel. Alrighty, well, just like that. Got a few bits to cut out. So I've done a, a bit of a cutout on that one, just to have a bit of a look on the outside. Uh, get a bit of an idea, see if I like that kind of design. That middle one, that kind of plays in with the cutouts of the rear diff uh, bracket. So kind of similar to that. So I'll work out a couple of bend angles now, we'll chuck a couple of bends in. And then we'll get it tacked on, pull the jig out, get the control arm on and see what sort of clearance we've got. Alright, well with the power of editing, that is all intact in, I've got the upper control arm in, so down obviously not an issue, it's going away from it, but see up, up the back in here, so it's just starting to touch there, so it just starts to touch and then it's got to be another 10mm to go up, so I think I'm going to take that arc a bit higher and then both of these two side pieces I'm actually going to bring up above this plate as well maybe maybe another 15 mil just so it gives it a bit of extra web around this side I'll extend this one out another 10 make a few adjustments on the computer and in a second it'll be revised and we can have another look Right, okay, well, been at it for a few more hours now. Uh, cut out some more pieces. I also add a little one into that. Now, I've gotten to this point, and I don't like how this sticks up. I don't like how this comes down flat. This is all curved and nice, and then this is just flat and ugly. So, also, also for a bit of extra strength, I think I want to tie this piece into this uh, top control arm bracket. So it ties in and flows around, uh, possibly from the front edge as well. So I'm looking at cutting that off, or maybe just the sides of that off, so I can integrate it into this piece. And also, when I drew that up, I drew that based on a photo of that. So that's a really good match for that bracket, but that is the new bracket for the airbags. And I want to be able to run the factory shocks. So 
So one thing that I didn't pick up on is that piece there. So need to modify things a bit. So decided to put my big boy pants on and jump back into the world of fusion. Pretty scary stuff. So you can see You can see here I've modified the design, I've added this little radius along the bottom to accommodate for the top of the factory shock. I've also punched this outer edge out enough so that it can fit inside once I weld the bracing around the outside of it. Also brought the 3D scan back in of the rear subframe that has this carrier piece from the jig and I've now uh, centered that drawing into that so yeah we've got that sketch on the scanned subframe now so now that sketch is in the right place I can use that to project down and see so yeah, it hasn't taken too long to get that scan onto the subframe so I think I'll go into the old house, uh, sit down for a bit, and I'll nut this out in 3D. Um, I think just before when I was designing the chassis and I got to this point, my brain was just a bit fried from all the learning and just, it was like just day after day after day just sitting in front of the computer and I think by the time I got to this point, it just, I was fried. <laughs> so, I think now, a little bit more confident in uh, using this so I'm gonna jam away see if I can link it up with that top control arm and then that way it can be braced nice and we'll see how we can get it to flow and look a bit better than what I've got on there at the moment because what I've just been a few hours doing it definitely looks like an afterthought which it is but I don't want it to look that way so we'll cut back once I've sorted it all out Okay, so a few hours later, I've been at it, uh, it was still the same day. <laughs> um, been playing around, mucking around for a, uh, a few hours, and I think I've come up with a design that should look like right in real life. So you can see here, I've uh, adjusted that top support so it's got the curve to accommodate the factory shock. I've uh, got this piece that'll sort of come around. Uh, I had to stop and get the control arm back on just to double check this but I can't go around any further with this bracket because the control arm actually comes up very close to this uh, well where the actual shock mounts so it can't really be that much clearance uh, standard really now I've made it so it comes around and onto where the top control arm mount is so I am going to have to chop that out See, that's it there on the chassis. So you can see here, that's it on the chassis. So coming around and linking up with that top control arm. Should have clearance for where the uh, upper control arm mounts there as well. So yeah, pretty happy with that. I think we'll convert them into some DXF files and uh, cut them out. I'm just going to go straight for the 6mm, I think. I'm happy with how it looks on the computer, so I should be happy with it in real life. So, so we'll fire up the old plasma table and we'll get them cut out. Well there you go, that is all cut out. Now that I see them all cut out, I am quarter inches, possibly a bit of an overkill, but just because it's just out in the middle of nowhere, I feel it's better to go a bit overkill than anything. Probably could have done away with maybe like a 4mm or 5mm, a little bit thinner, but 6mm is what I had, quarter inch. And 
definitely don't want to be blowing a shock out of your new chassis. So we'll chuck these, we'll just go through and knock all, there's a bit of slag and stuff there. We'll go through and knock all that off and then I'll uh, give it the old overnight uh, vinegar bath trick. Get rid of all the scale and crud and then we'll uh, look at getting it on. Typically can't see the engineer complaining about that. I mean, this part of the chassis hasn't been signed off, I'm just going for it. So that's another reason to go overboard. It is the next morning and uh, all those pieces have been in their little day spa vinegar overnight. I uh, just hit them with some, I think it's like 120 grit. Just clean them up a little bit. So they're fitting over the shop nice. Good, good amount of overhang there so nothing's going to foul up. So I think to start with, I'm going to start with this bit which is the uh, back piece. So. That bit there ties into the upper control arm and we'll come bend around and then this bit will join onto this back arm here. So I'm going to start from this end because that there is fairly critical for clearance for the upper control arm to articulate and if we have to do any trimming or anything I'll do it on this end if it doesn't fit. So we'll get a few bends in this and then uh, we'll take her in. Okay, well, that was an interesting turn of events. So on my little hand brakey thing there, you can set your degrees. So I knew I needed an 85 degree bend, so I went to do a test bend to see where I end up, if I had any spring back in the steel, that kind of jazz. Also to work out my measurement back of where it would end up, so I knew where to make my bend. I went for an 85 degree bend and she done that which quite clearly is over 90 so took me a bit of mucking around but I found a setting like another little screen and somehow it was set to minus 13 so it was adding 13 onto it so I'm glad I done a test bend first so we've now got the piece all bent up, so we'll get her tacked in and then we'll bend up the other bit which is going to be a bit of a mission because it's actually a curve not just an easy bend. So we'll get this tacked on and then we'll have a go at doing the other bit. So a little tip for when you're tacking is think about where you can get a grinder. The amount of times I have tacked something into spot and had a brain fart and put a tack where I cannot get a grinder to cut it out if I have to. It's just a nightmare. So now we'll try and work out this other bit. So basically it's going to be flat up until about here. I'll put it up and sort of work it out. And then I think I'm going to try and do the same method I ended up doing for the rest of the chassis. So put it in the pan brake and just do a series of uh, small bends to get the curve. And we'll see how we go. Hopefully it comes up all right. Um, I mean, I probably could heat it up and bash it around with a hammer, but then that's going to leave hammer marks. So hopefully this should work and we don't scrap it. So we'll give it a go. Oh, oh. See all those scribe lines there, so basically that's every 10 mil, so just under half an inch. Um, where's my other bit? So, you see it's, it's not a massively tight radius it has to go. So, I'm going to take a stab in the dark and say that every 10 mil, I put say 3 degrees. There's 14 bends at 3 degrees, which I think should be pretty close. So we'll give that a go and we'll see how, how close it is. Oh, well that hasn't turned out too shabby. Um, 
I ended up just putting it on manual mode. The, uh, I guess the auto one, if you mucked around with it for long enough, you could get it to work, but you go up four degrees, it wasn't even touching the thing, so I just went manual and used the old eyeball and just kicked it until it moved a little bit and then went along with that and then I was just keep checking with this to make sure I wasn't going all crazy or not enough or whatever and you know, well, she's not perfect. The first one I done the very see, I don't know, I'm just gonna show but the very first bend is a bit too much. But you know, it's only half a gram of water will fill that up. <laughs> So, I'll give that a bit of a grind up, get rid of these big marks. It's the only downside of using the pan brake is it puts the, these big ridges in it which are pretty ugly. So, we'll give that a quick grind up and then we'll uh, take her on. Right, well, I think I like that. Um, this top piece having the curve as opposed to the first pieces I cut that were wrong for the airbag support, I think the curve is definitely much nicer. Um, even though it will be redundant because I'll be running the airbag support, uh, the fact that you can put factory stuff back on is worth it and it makes it look better because it's got the curve instead of the flat bit. So I think now I'm going to try and get this jig out and then we'll get one of the upper control arms in and uh, see if it clears everything. Now I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to get this out. So with the 8 inch stuff it was able to flex a little bit so I was able to get this jig out. So we'll have a play and we'll see if I can actually get this thing out of there. Only just. Alright, well, you can see on the up travel, we've got a bit of uh, clapping just up in there. You can see just down in here, we've got just enough clearance. All in all, I think that's pretty good really. That's um, just a little bit of trimming up in here. Uh, that back bit I may trim just a touch off that just to give it a little, little bit more. So these bolts on this control arm are quite sloppy and they're kind of, they've got like a real big clearance hole and they're kind of on an arc. So I don't really know much about um, the suspension alignments and stuff like that, but that will allow this end to move like front to back so I don't know if that's like part of an adjustment so I need to make sure that in all positions of those holes there's clearance so I'll cycle it backwards and forwards and around and sort of clearance it out but I think just for the sake of it I might throw the rear shock in. The shock is in I think uh, it's making it look a lot nicer I feel so We'll go, we'll go, we'll go up, we'll go up, we'll go up like that, we'll go boom, pshhh, 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 <laughs> pretty cool, so I think I'm gonna, I'll burn this side in, I'll smash out the other side and then we'll cut back um, I'll go through clearance everything and then we should be able to put all the suspension on. Now I don't know if a wheel, I mean I don't think we're going to be able to put a wheel on, I don't know. But anyway we'll burn this out, jump onto the other side, get that to this point. But I mean that's pretty exciting. 
So yeah, we'll get the jig in first, clamp it all down uh, before I start doing any welding. Pretty happy with that. First air shock in. Oh, oh, it's been a bit of time. I've got both sides fully welded and it's cooled right down now and had a little bit of a clean up. Uh, same as everything. Once it's fully finished and before it goes to the engineer, I've left these left these pipes on both ends so I can get it onto the pipe stand, spin it around and clean it all up again. But now it's all cool. So, so one thing when you're using these jigs is make sure it's just absolutely cold before you pull it apart. Uh, if it's still like hot and you start pulling bolts out, it can go any way it wants. So bolts and the jigs, they they do help to keep it where you want it. So we'll pull the jig pieces out, we'll get those top control arms in again. I haven't checked the one on this side, but this one on this side still needs a little bit of clearancing. I'm just going to do a little rough one for now, and then same thing later on, I'll contour it and make it look nice. So we should be able to get all this out and chuck the suspension in. I'm really hoping the wheel goes on too, to be honest. So, cut back uh, when we are installing suspension. Alright, well, as I kind of predicted and knew deep down was going to happen, <laughs> it is going to need a fair bit of modification. So, you can see in here, the distance from uh, this pickup point coming out, how it comes quite wide. If I go down, That is touching there. Now, you can see the angle of the axle is pointing up. You would imagine, or I would imagine, that at ride height that would be flat. So this is going to have to notch quite a bit. So yeah, it did dawn on me um, a while ago when we were doing the other control arms and that, or when we were doing that one actually, the diff. I just happened to look at the standard uh, subframe and the lower section, well, I just projected the bottom thing straight up through to create the chassis, whereas this bottom one should have been in. So, it is a pain, but we'll have to get all of this out and try and work out a nice way of notching this. It's not going to look funky. Alrighty, well I have been jamming away, I've got that all notched out, I've got the other side done, uh, you can have a look. So, it's all notched out, I've had everything in there, it's all clearance well, full droop, nothing's touching, uh, still, still a bit of clean up. So yeah, still a bit of clean up to do, um, but same as before, I'm just going to leave that until that final stage before it goes to the engineer. So, I don't really see future Nick is going to want to punch past Nick in the face <laughs> for leaving so much unfinished stuff but I'm pretty happy with how it looks so we'll get the other side in so one thing all this in and out is uh, good for is learning the order of operations to put stuff in I mean I've had this side in and out probably five times the other side I had in and out I think before I had it all clearanced and happy so it's good getting a mental note of how to do it for when everything is painted which won't be for a while <laughs> also which way around to put the little cam bolts the other side they are both in the wrong way which would make uh, doing a wheel on it hard so we'll bash this side in Well, that's all bolted up. Um, a bit spewing, I can't get wheels on it while it's still on the table. That's a bit of a shame, but uh, yeah. it is another step forward, which is good. 
Yeah, we've been at this for about six weeks now. Yeah, it's good. Everything's bolted up. We can go through its full cycle of travel uh, without fouling on anything. I guess when you jack the car up, it'll go full, full droop, so you just still don't want stuff touching. I mean, chances of me ever getting the Metro Airborne are fairly slim, I would imagine. So, I think we'll leave it there for this episode. We'll address the old elephant in the room. Some of you may have noticed that there is a engine and gearbox and drive shaft attached to this thing and the radiator. So while I was waiting for that stuff to do its thing in the vinegar the other day, I just thought a bit of spare time, so I chucked all that on. Well, in the next episode, I'm going to make a mount up for the gearbox, uh, drive shaft carrier bearing, and I think I'm just going to move forward. I'm trying to get something mounted for these handbrake cables. These brake lines here as well, they need a little tab somewhere. So I think I'm just going to move forward. Uh, kind of just delaying the inevitable front shock situation. Yeah, I really still haven't come up with a really good idea of how I'm going to do like some towers for the front shocks without it looking like a tractor, basically. I feel the back of the chassis was somewhat easier because it's all nice and compact so you can make everything flow, whereas the front, the shock towers are low, you know, they're way up in the air. But anyway, pretty happy with that. That is. There's one custom independent rear end. Anyway, as usual, if you have made it this far to the episode, thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you on the next one.